uh, but it, it's a hit. This police station polices that area, and we're here because we, we are disgusted with the fact that uh, people are down there basically inciting racial hatred on the streets. There are laws against this kind of thing in this country, and it is clear that in this situation, those laws are, are in no way being enforced. These people are being allowed to create media which is spreading around this country, particularly into rural areas, and this city is a cosmopolitan city, so they're not getting any traction in this city, but around this country, these people are managing to change what's common sense in rural areas. Where you walk into a bar and where uh, two years ago uh, people wouldn't say these things, now you walk into a bar and you're almost inevitably going to hear one or two or three people in that bar spouting the same rhetoric. It's dangerous. It's dangerous because there are direct provision centres around this country. There are now uh, emergency direct uh, provision accommodation places appearing around this country and these people are trying to incite communities against these people and create division where it is not needed. The direct provision system is a horrible system already without people in that system feeling under threat. Hi, my name's Izzy and um, I First of all, I want to thank Lucky for what he's said because it's very important to hear the perspective of people who are asylum seekers in this country, people who've come to this country for safety, and uh, and by and large have found safety here. Uh, now, we're we're living in quite disturbing times, and over the last few years, we have seen throughout Europe and also in the U.S. and in other parts of the world, uh, we have seen a resurgence in right-wing activity that is. Uh, specifically focused against migrants and trying to create alarm around people who for various reasons have traveled from one country to another uh, and also to claw back some of the protections that have been won by the LGBT community over the years and some of the protections that have been won by feminists over the years and this is very solidly their agenda. Um, I want to say that um, Last year, uh, a little group of right-wing troublemakers uh, toured around Ireland and everywhere they went, they managed to find a handful of often quite scared and confused people that they were able to exploit and turn to their own ends. And I agree with what uh, Eamon said earlier, that the policy of direct provision, which is a very negative uh, way of treating people who have come here for safety, but the policy of direct provision, and more recently, the policy of placing direct provision in isolated rural locations where there aren't a lot of supports for people, has absolutely fed into this um, fear-mongering, fear -mongering, that's a difficult word to say, excuse me, fear-mongering agenda. Um, so these people travelled around the country and everywhere they went there was um, a spike in um, hate crime of some description, whether it was just uh, verbal abuse, harassment of migrants who were living in the communities. And in three cases there were fires. And two of these fires were very close to my home in County Leitrim, about you know, 10 or 12 miles away from where I live, uh, in a place called Ruski, which is on the borders of County Leitrim and County Roscommon. Um, so myself and a, a small group of friends, as many of you have done in your local communities, you've tried to come together to protect people who are vulnerable in your communities. And myself and a little group of friends went to um, Ruski to hold a little solidarity gathering uh, to express solidarity with the people who were about to be housed there, about to be accommodated there, people who were in even more unsuitable accommodation elsewhere, who were waiting for their lives in Ireland to begin. And now there had been this fire and there was trouble in the community and people were afraid. So we went there to have a little solidarity gathering and um, one of these two gatherings was disrupted by uh, a person who is one of the acolytes of Gemma O'Doherty, the hate preacher of Barrow Street, as she has become in the meantime. Um, and she interrupted our, our speeches. In fact, we were, I, I had opened 
the, the rally, and I was literally two sentences into my speech. Uh, all I had managed to say was, it's very sad that we're gathered here together for a second time after a second arson attack on the hotel in Ruski. I had not in fact used the word racist, and obviously her script said I was going to say racist. Uh, and she didn't know what to say because I hadn't performed her script. So she fired forward out of the, out of the crowd saying, how can you say that? How can you say that? Where's your proof? And I was like, the proof that it's arson? You know, a hotel that's been empty for 10 years without going on fire doesn't spontaneously combust twice in four weeks, you know. Uh, it, it, it was an absurd little interjection, but it was being filmed by the man who calls himself Gran Torino. Uh, we call him, we, I, I call him, I call him Gran Torino. I think that's a better name for him, but he has, he has various uh, nicknames, as people will be aware. Uh, was there live streaming, trying to make it appear that we were harassing him. Uh, the next thing we knew, within 24 hours, the, the handful of rural people who organized that protest, our faces and names were everywhere on right-wing sites all over the world. And we were receiving harassment, we were receiving death threats, we were receiving all the kind of stuff that you've seen with Hazel Chu in the last few days. So this is what we're up against. I think it's just very important to be, to say what we are up against. Now when we talk about hate speech, the other side talk about free speech. And we need to be very clear about what free speech is and isn't. Because free speech makes it sound like people say, oh you know it's only words. You know, we were all brought up saying, sticks and stones will break my bones but names will never hurt me. It's not true. It's not true. Genocide starts with words. If you look at the 1930s in Germany, what were they doing? They were burning books, right? They were, they were trying to... to and and if, you, if you look at the very famous picture of a Nazi book burning, it is actually the library of the Hirschfeld Institute, which was um, a sexology institute, which was a, a, a beacon of uh, tolerance and respect for trans people in 1930s Germany and that was where that was what they wanted to wipe out that was what they wanted to destroy now whether it's is Islamist terrorism or right-wing terrorism the way that terrorism is organized these days is a model called stochastic terrorism and what that means is that some um, demagogue who never has to get their hands dirty sits in their in their bedroom or in their home office live streaming and spreading inflammatory conspiracy theories like this great replacement nonsense that we hear every day now and they spread this stuff out there to people who are vulnerable mentally and they never have to lift a hand themselves. They never have to burn a direct provision center. They never have to uh, throw eggs or paint at the, at the house of an immigrant. They never have to break any heads in the street. They never have to shoot up any buildings or public assemblies. They never have to plant any bombs. Because there are people out there, unstable people out there, who will do it for them. They are planting the seeds. And the seeds grow unless we are very, very careful. So I think it's important to say that we need to come together. Yes, the, there is a problem. There is hate crime um, legislation, or there is hate speech legislation at least, and it is not being properly implemented. There is uh, provision, the, the social media companies are private companies. They can police their own platforms, and they do so inadequately. People get... People get uh, thrown, thrown off who shouldn't get thrown off, and these hate mongers stay on. But we are the people who count, and what really needs to happen, it's not about the police or the state or the social media companies standing against hate. We need to make this kind of activity unacceptable in our communities. It's very... Um, pleasing to see you here with us today. I think we're well on the way to doing that. I think we've completely changed the conversation in the last six months. And let's go to Barrow Strait. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to move to Barrow Street now, and we understand that there are some literal fascists 